So I wake up in the morning and I'm brushing my teeth and I see blood in the sink. And there is this feeling which I get. I'm 27 years old. I'm 42 now. I'm 27 years old and I'm brushing my teeth and there is blood in the sink. My first instinct is that, is this because I smoke? Is this finally something, is this finally a sign telling me that my smoking is something that is getting far worse than I ever thought it would affect me. Now, let's be, let's be clear about this. I am 27 years old. I'd been smoking for about 10 years at that point of time. And what I was doing was that smoke between shoots. Um, I was helping produce reality TV at that point of time. And what I would actually do is to sit down and smoke between shots. Now, when you're trying to take a break, a smoke. When you are trying to chat with a friend, you would have a smoke. When you would go out and have a drink, you would have a smoke. And this was such a constant part from my morning till my night that I didn't see myself quitting it. Um, I would have days when I would tell myself that, you know, I think I'm just going to like cut down a little bit or maybe I'll go, you know, I'll, I'll take a few weeks off. But I would always go back. And I was a 27-year-old who was feeling this drain of energy within me, right? I would wake up in the morning and I'd feel a bit of a drag. I'd go to sleep and I could feel it. <clears throat> my throat sometimes sounds like this, which is why I didn't night tea. And I feel it's because of all those years of smoking and it's been so long since I quit. Imagine, this is 2009. We're in 2024 right now. And that morning when there was blood in my sink, could have very easily I just have been my gums bleeding because I just didn't have good dental health at that point of time. But that's a whole different video. I actually had this feeling and this feeling was that if I don't make a change now, it's never going to happen. And I quit smoking right there and then. But that moment of quitting smoking all those years ago taught me something. When I thought back on that. It didn't just teach me how you need to prioritize your health against bad habits that you pick up along the way. It also taught me an important, almost framework that I've used throughout my life is that whenever you feel like you are not doing something that is towards your purpose, towards what you really value, it's this framework that really helps. So I think there's a three part process to what really made me quit smoking the way I did and how could I kind of hold on to it for so long, all these years? Is I ever feeling the urge? I mean, I've had the occasional drag I remember in the early years. And every time I would do it, my body would just reject it. There was no part of me that when I even gave myself that option, when I actually took it in, said, oh, I want to start this again. S switched off. And the three parts are this. The first thing was the people that I was surrounding myself with. Now, till that point of time, I used to work in television. Um, and I was surrounded by people who would always go for a smoke break. Um, and these are my friends. Before that, I was in college. I had a lot of friends who smoked. And so what would happen was that my friends, the people I hung out with were all people who smoked. So in a sense, if I want to hang with them, I'll have to smoke too. And that became this cycle of smoking. But when I quit that time, I had just quit my job to start my first company, Glitch. And my co-founder Owen didn't smoke. And because by spending my majority amount of my time with someone who didn't smoke, it suddenly made it much easier for me to quit because I'm not surrounded by someone who is smoking all the time. So I don't feel the urge. I don't feel the peer pressure. So even those first few weeks, and obviously we would meet our friends and we do all that stuff. But somehow, because we had just started, that first month was just the two of us, largely. Apart from a few shoots here and there where we were too stressed out to even think about doing other things. And that one month of just being around someone, being around a peer who you know is not, even, forget pushing you to do, they're not doing what you just quit. And that was the first step. Who you surround yourself with has a lot to do with which path you follow. The second thing, and this is the most important one, I, I feel this is so crucial to everything. We all have these habits because you want to escape a part of our life. When you're in college, you smoke because you want to escape your classroom. You find, you know, find your classes boring and, and because of that, what happens is that you want to take a break, you go for a smoke. 
when you're working, you want to take a break from your work and, and you end up going for a smoke. When we started Lich, that was purpose. That I had clear purpose. It's something I really wanted to do. I wanted to do well. I didn't want to take my eye off the ball at all. And so I had nothing I wanted to escape from. And because I had nothing I wanted to escape from and because I had nothing that I need to run away from, because I had found purpose. I had found a path that I was enjoying that didn't require me to escape at all. It didn't need an escape. So I didn't need to smoke. And so when you find yourself on a path that you know that I don't want to escape from this. I want to spend more time doing this. It becomes easier for you to quit the things that are those habits that you use in your life. A third one. Um, and this is crucial for the long term. Is that I had realized that at 27 that I valued my health. I valued just how I felt when I woke up in the morning. I valued how I felt before I went to sleep. I valued that taste in my mouth, which smoking, once you quit smoking, you realize how that taste in your mouth was, how different it was. It showed me that I valued these things far more than whatever the kick that smoking gave me, whatever that escape it gave me. So when you know what you value, when you have a clear purpose, and when you surround yourself with people who are kind of in the same direction as you are, who are on the same path in, in a similar form as you are, then not jumping into bad habits like smoking becomes far easier. And I know I started talking about smoking and I went to a framework, but everything you do for your own health can teach you so much about what you can go out and do for your own life. Like drinking a nice cup of chamomile tea in the night instead of having that extra bite or extra night midnight munchies. So that's what I want to share with you today on this fully raw episode of Founders Notes. I hope you like it. Tell me if this was valuable. Tell me if this was random. If it looks like I'm not looking at the camera most times, it's because I have this thing on my front camera. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. Th these are, I love doing these. It's just like it's so raw. I'm not worried about the edit. I'm just saying I want to talk to you from the heart and hear what you say. And I realize this is a reasonably long video. So I think I'll call it a night now. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell icon as well. If you're a parent and you finished watching this video and you want your kid to build more emotional intelligence and more emotional strength, then make sure you check out the Emomi YouTube channel. I'm dropping the link down below. It's a place where your kids can actually learn about everything from confidence to their own emotions, to building resilience and emotional strength and so much more. You're going to be dropping a ton of content there for parents to show their kids. But even if you're a grown up, you might learn a bunch of things over there as well. So make sure you check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video.